Hey YouTube, Jason with Prometheus. Uh, it has been a long time since I've done a Tools of the Trade video. Mm. Uh, I, there are a lot of things around the shop, like this bad boy here, that uh, are cool tools. A lot of tools I will buy, used, and modify to sort of suit my budget uh, and my intended usage. Uh, and this is a good example of that. Uh, I don't have an optical comparator in the shop, which would be nice to have. So this is my poor man's optical comparator. This is a Midutoyo uh, inspection microscope. It's quite old. I looked on eBay for a long, long time to find one that was a reasonable price and reasonable condition. Um, and here she is, the magic of eBay. And so basically what this is, it is a mini optical comparator. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, it's basically a measuring microscope. I think that's the simplest way to put it. And like a comparator, uh, this has got this cool backlight function where you can basically see the edge of a part and you can get a really accurate sharp line on there. Uh, now, I have modified this thing relatively substantially. Originally, it came with, uh, I don't know what you call them, the, the old school, basically manual dials to adjust the measurement. And while that is delightfully mid-century, it is fairly difficult to use because you're not often working from a specific zero point, you sort of, you know, want to be like, okay, this is the edge of my part, I want to zero it here. And with these digital ones, you just press the zero button and it says zero. Um, with the hand dials, you're always working from some other point. So you've got to like get out your scratch pad and write down where you are and then move it and write down where you are again and subtract it. And it's just much, much easier um, with these digital micrometer heads. Now, I will say these micrometer heads I also got used on eBay and they cost me almost as much as the microscope itself did. Um, but it is definitely worth the swap. Uh, it's a good tool anyway. It's a much better tool with the digital stuff just because it's faster. And uh, when I'm in here uh, by myself, I only have so many hours in a day to do work and it's very important for me to be able to work quickly and efficiently and having these digital micrometer heads on here really helped me do that. Um, so, oh yeah, okay, other modifications. So I put the micrometer heads on. I also bought this microscope light. Oh, look at that. It's a microscope ring light uh, off the internet. These are for other kinds of microscopes. So I ended up having to machine a little adapter to go on here, but it works great. You can adjust the intensity which is cool. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you want to see the top surface of your part, like here. Sometimes you want to see the edge of the part, which is where the backlight comes in handy. Um, and this has a very thin focal plane, so um, if you're trying to measure something, you often have to adjust the focus up and down, which is no big deal. There's a knob right here just for that purpose. You will notice two other things that bring this antique into the modern age. One is the microscope camera. And two, I wanted the microscope camera so I could put up a monitor and like stand up and like I'm doing here, I can see what I'm doing and I don't have to hunch over this thing and you know, go half blind squinting in one eye all day. The microscope camera is good it is not as good as just looking directly through the eyepiece. Uh, and so you can see these red lines on the screen and these are actually projected by the software and the software is actually kind of cool. It's got a mouse and stuff attached to it. Um, so you can go in and actually take pictures and videos and you know, adjust all the video settings as far as brightness and contrast and that sort of thing. Uh, it also has, oh, what would you call it? Well, I don't know. I'm brain dead at the moment. Let me demonstrate. So if you turn the mic or turn the light down, it will automatically adjust the exposure. Yeah, that's what it is, the exposure. So it's got auto exposure, which is cool because I can crank it all the way up 
and it's gonna try to expose that correctly. But if you turn it all the way up, you blow out the backlight. If you kind of find this happy medium, you can get both backlight and surface light, which is great. Uh, do I have those parts here still? Oh, well, this is kind of weird. So original, how am I gonna do this? Originally, this microscope came with these two little incandescent lights that mount to either side uh, and shine down to eliminate your work area. A, they're not very bright. B, uh, this one is actually missing the little lens that focuses the light, which makes it even less bright. Uh, and C, right now they're burning my hands because they get really hot. So I would just tuck those back there and the ring light works way better. Um, but so if I need to actually do something that is really precise, I'll take the camera off. Most of the time I don't need to do that. Uh, these micrometer heads, I think, read to 50 millionths or something. And, you know, based on the size of the line that's projected on the screen, it's not bad. Uh, the other drawback to using the camera, uh, sort of like, I guess, any digital camera, is that you get a smaller picture than you do if you actually just look through the lens. So right now, basically what I'm seeing compared to what I see, if I stick my eyeball in there, is zoomed in, which is not bad. Sometimes it's a little awkward. Most of the time, though, I'm trying to measure a small feature, so it's fine if it's zoomed in. The other thing is uh, it creates a lot of distortion. So the edge of my image is like super out of focus, and the center is pretty tight. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera or not. But again, it's not a huge deal, but when you look through the actual objective, everything is crystal clear and beautiful, and there's this little dashed line. Uh, and there's actually a wheel here where you can, it's got crosshairs, basically like this does, uh, but you can rotate them so you can like measure angles and cool stuff like that. What do I use this for, you might ask, before we get to the end of this video? I mostly use it for checking chamfers, uh, or features that are either just too small or too difficult to measure directly with calipers or a micrometer. Um, and like a chamfer on edge, I used to use my you know, calipers and just kind of eyeball it, uh, which is not a great way to do it. I'm not sure how else you would measure an edge chamfer. You can measure a whole chamfer with a whole chamfer gauge, but that's another bunch of stuff you have to buy. So this thing basically does a bunch of jobs. And then, so, I mean, like on an edge chamfer, you just line it up, zero it out, move over to this edge. If you need to be really accurate, you can focus it. Um, and this, because the magnification is so high, it's easily, easily plus or minus a thou. If you really want to fidget with it, you can get a little better. I think if you use uh, the crosshairs in the objective, probably plus or minus five tenths. Uh, so that's good enough for most things. And you can also uh, use it to basically inspect surface finish, which anytime you put something on a microscope, it looks much worse than it actually is. Uh, but you, you know, you can check. Well, these are some engraved letters and this part's been sitting out, so it's very dusty. Um, but, you know, you can check the finish and the quality of the engraving, and it's just nice. It's easy. Um, then there are some things. Oh, so I use this. I wish I had a large model to demonstrate with, but I don't. So on the Kappa quick release, the keychain thing, uh, basically on the male portion of the quick release, there is a radius to groove on either side of the cylinder where the spring engages. Now, if you try to measure that radius groove with calipers, the calipers are flat and the groove is round. So you're never actually going to get a true measurement and you can do a bunch of math to figure that out and stuff, but I don't have to do that because I just throw it on here uh, and I use the backlight and I can just measure visually, you know, just basically from one edge to the other edge. And that's been really awesome. That's actually the main reason I first started looking into these microscopes is so I could accurately measure uh, that groove. Uh, so it's good for all kinds of stuff. I think I've overstayed my welcome. Uh, if you have any questions about this or what I did with it, uh, 
Let me know in the comments and we'll see you next time. Thank you.